22 north by 34 west. So we're two clicks that way. I don't want to take us across open country, but we'll save four hours if we don't stick to the tree line. You've got the stripes. Thank you, Willis. So, we move swift but steady. Stay in the high grass and try and stay on the right side of that hill. You ready? Say when. Let's move out. Abandoned. Looks like it might have been an outpost. Nazis must have pulled a step ahead of the Rangers. Let's keep moving. Bogey. Right, so Bogey goes to this table. The local police captain sees two German officers. The German general asks Bogey to sit. This German general is trying to intimidate Bogey. <laughs> this should be good. So he asks him, he says, Why did you leave Paris right before the Nazi occupation? He says, are you one of those people who can't imagine the Germans in their beloved Paris? And Bogey goes, well, it's not particularly my beloved Paris. <laughs> so what then? So then the other crowd asks him, how would you feel if the Nazis took London? Bogey says, ask me when you get there. He says, so how about if the Nazis took New York? 
Foggy, straight face, says, Well, there are certain sections of New York I'd advise against you invading. <laughs> That's good. Let's cross here. Sarge! Mackie! How bad? Just keep pressure on it. <laughs> I just take a look at our uninvited guest. Get my bayonet mirror. We can't stay here. Can you move? Yeah. We need to hug this ravine, try and make our way back up the hill, stand of his line of sight. <laughs> okay. Then we gotta double time it back to that barn. All right. Get me a cigarette. What? Let's get me a cigarette. Or just a little help. Go on, Sarge, I'll cover you. You'd be right on my ass.
Take a look at that wound. Easy. Looks like it went right through. Lucky you're right-handed. Trust me, this isn't what lucky feels like. We're gonna have to get you back soon. We're not gonna be able to stop this bleeding with a field med kit. But we got a problem, because I don't think our German friend's gonna give us a courtesy of a head start. Here, hang on to that. <sighs> Too tight? No. Maybe you should try and sneak off after dark and get some help. Not a chance, sir. How much ammo do we have? We had 40 carbine rounds and whatever's in your sidearm. Right. One bayonet. Oh, we got one grenade. One grenade, one rifle, and my sidearm. So what's your plan, sir? We wait for him. He knows he's an easy target trying to cross that open field in daylight, so he'll wait for the cover of dark to try anything. He doesn't have a shot from outside, so as long as we stay up here, he'll have to come in after us. Otherwise, he risks us sneaking off after nightfall and losing us in the dark. Well, we could rig the door downstairs with a grenade and some wire from that field phone and hope he trips it on his way in. And if he doesn't, we have to take him. And hope that God favors the foolhardy. I'm gonna go rig the grenade. Oh, and uh, don't go anywhere.
RNA's rig, sir. Good. I'm gonna go ahead and take this. I'm not sure if I No can... discussion. Fired one of these since basic. Well, in that case, I'll give it back. <laughs> so, what was seminary school like? Oh, well, it's like anything else, I guess. You might like history or literature, but. It's just not the same when you have to study for a grade. You didn't like studying? I didn't like studying for a grade. Spent the better part of two years walking around and listening to people try and out-memorize each other. Every break between classes was like holding court on the sidewalk, judging those who had the quickest and most precise recall of scripture. Like you with Bogart movies. Yeah? Everybody had their own strategy on how to sound the smartest while doing the least amount of work. Some would memorize entire books from the Bible, others just the first and last verse from each book or as many as they could, but most of them would memorize the most referenced passages while having a few obscure ones in their ecclesiastic arsenal to sound way more studied than they actually were. I got so sick and tired of listening to them ramble and ramble without actually hearing what they're saying or what it truly means. The scariest part about that is those parrots might be our spiritual leaders one day. By the end of my second year, I was ready to drop out and write a book on how I lost my faith while attending seminary school. <laughs> ah, the irony. Knee deep and rising fast. Oh, yeah. What happened? At well, the beginning of my third year, I met a teacher, Dr. Neville. Uh, he was a rock. Just a big farm kid, you know? He's a Golden Gloves champion by the time he was 20. My soul's salvation. First day he came into class, the first thing he said was, now I'm going to be asking you a bunch of questions during this course, and those of you who want to quote scripture instead of giving me an answer out of your own head, well, you won't be attending class tomorrow. <laughs> He was simply merciless. About 20 minutes later, it was me and two other guys left in class. Dr. Neville really helped me through. He helped me find out what was important. He met me at 5.30, the morning I had to catch the 8 a.m. bus to basic so I could take my exit exam. He took those results personally to my mother and father. He sent them to me over in basic, but, you know, I didn't get them until I landed over here. Still got that letter. It's under my bunk. I take it out every now and again and look at it, but... I guess I just haven't found the right moment to open it and find out whether I passed or not. Well, why not? You could have got reassigned out of infantry. Been a... Padre or something. I don't know. Maybe I just don't want to mix what I was trying to do then with what I have to do now. Because you have to kill? I don't think a man of God has any business killing another man who's probably never even seen a Bible unless he's throwing it on a bonfire. I don't think a soldier should have room in his thoughts for what faith his enemy is. Now, better to do what I have to now and I guess what I want to later. Sounds good. It sounds like bullshit, but it sounds good. Is that what you tell yourself so you can sleep at night? No. For that, I simply ask God to let me dream of what I was. Just the strength to be what I am. You know, to my knowledge, though, I've never killed anyone. 
I mean, I've shot at silhouettes and shapes in the distance and over fences and things, but I've never been in a close quarters confrontation. As a soldier, I don't think I've killed anyone in this war. So what was it like, the first time? Combat, I mean. Well, we were on the boat for Three or was it four days? Well, a few days anyway before they deployed us. They brought us in after the main force had already broken through. So we were just bringing up the rear. Mopping up everything in our path. There were no vague shapes of soldiers behind fences in the distance. I remember seemed like every time I turned a corner, there was a flash of movement from left to right. I just started firing, trying not to close my eyes. Went on like that forever. Every step became a calculated risk because every corner was hiding another German. I can't remember how long we were out there until we finally heard the squad leader calling all clear. After that, we all sat around, tried to calm down. Everybody was smoking, trying to tell a joke. And as I sat there, I noticed this wall that had collapsed after an artillery round or something. This wall had just caved in and there was a big pile of rubble. And I remember looking down, seeing this hand, the German hand, sticking out from underneath all those rocks. And while I was studying it, I realized it was moving. And I didn't move or say anything. I just sat there and watched this hand try to clear away the rocks that were on top of it. It would move a few pebbles, but it wasn't strong enough to shift the larger stones. Every time it tried, it just sort of flopped back and then it would try again. I remember this one stone about the size of a brick. It was the only one it could get a good grip on. Just tried and tried to lift it or push it aside. The stone just wouldn't move. I remember thinking there was a man underneath all those rocks trying to dig himself out and I wasn't supposed to help him. Must have watched that hand for a couple of hours till everyone started laughing. Somebody had finally told a good joke. I looked around. Everybody was just so happy. I looked back at the hand, and it stopped moving. But it finally managed to pull that one stone free. So there I sat, staring at this stone, lying next to this hand that wasn't moving anymore. I thought to myself, 
but it just moved that one stone. Maybe it could have moved the rest by itself. All the times I had to shoot men, that was the only time I felt like a killer. What was it that Bogey told that girl? Remember when she asked him what he was doing the night before or something? Oh, he said, I don't remember. It was a long time ago. Right. And then she asked him what he was doing that night. Oh, Bogey says, I don't know. I never planned that far ahead. What was, what was the part right after that? Oh, the part where the chief of police asked why Bogey came to Casablanca. Bogey says, uh, I came to Casablanca for my health. I came for the waters. And the chief of police says, uh, what waters? Well, we are in the desert. Bogey, without missing a beat, says, well, I was mission formed.
Come on, Sarge, we're almost there. On your feet, Sergeant! Mike, I need you to do something for me. Anything. I need you to... I need you to write a letter. I need you to write a letter to my wife. Yeah, sure, Sam. Shoot. My love, even now, I know I'm the luckiest man in the world to have found you. Don't worry, sweetheart. Everything's fine because of you. I will love you always. Mike. Yes, Sam. How did you make sure she gets this? It's important. You got it, Sam. Thanks for not leaving me. Mike. Yes, Sam. Pray with me, please. Sure. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hello, ma'am. My name's Mike Willis. I... I served with Sam. I just thought you might want to know that his last thoughts were of you. <laughs> 